Hello, I'm Larry Redden, and I'm leading uh, uh, Worship 2, and uh, we're going to have a good time. I'm going to talk about how to lead worship, and this is a little thing that I've kind of learned over 20 years, so i got a couple things to talk about that. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. I've been with Church of the Heartland now for about 20 years. I've been leading worship different venues, different outside concerts, different things, and it's all different. <laughs> I can't, I, actually every Sunday is different, and it, uh, so th that's what I want to talk about tonight is just how, as an individual, you know, if you're uh, just a leader in the church and you find yourself having to lead some sort of worship service, I think I can help you out a little bit with some of these things. I'd like to talk about, first of all, of uh, leaving a lot of space, you know, in your worship service. I mean, you get there, and uh, especially you're doing uh, video, let that video, you know, just resin in there, you know. Maybe find some backtracks to just play at the end of your worship. So, you know, you have something to uh, just let the Holy Spirit move in there. And if you're playing on the worship team, give, give some space there. You know, at the end of the song, just let that, just don't go from one song to the next. Give yourself a lot of space there. Because I know a lot of times, <laughs> I've heard a lot of worship teams, they do the song, they stop. And then, see how weird that was? Just, that's weird. Like, <laughs> you should work on your transitions of your songs. Make sure that you give God time to move. And uh, when you feel God moving on that, just you just go on that. You know, uh, let's see what else. I got. And there's different, uh, a whole, as far as the Holy Spirit moving, you know, there's different settings you need to during your, during your worship service too, you know. How loud should the guitar player be? How loud should the vocals be? You know, I like guitar myself, but they shouldn't be completely wide open, you know, and then you can't hear the vocals, which, thank God for in-ear monitors. That's what I like, so... But anyways, yes, so, you know, in your mix, you know, your drums and vocals should be the hottest thing. You know, you should work on that. And then everything else is like icing on the cake, you know, add some guitar, the bass in there. But, uh, but your vocals, you know, it's all about the words. And that's what I love about Nita. When we're learning a new song or something, she is like, she is all over the words. You know, I'm all about the guitar parts. She's all about the words, you know, because that's what we're trying. We're trying to get a message across, just like if you're preaching. You're still trying to get a message across to your congregation. So make sure that your vocals are able, they're able to hear your vocals, because that is the most important part. But a good mix is really good, because, uh, you know, just a really bad sound. And work on your sound, you know. Uh, all you tech people, please come to rehearsals. You know, go there, work on your sound. Make sure the whole team's there. Make sure, you know, your projection's going right. You know, like, I don't know how many services I've been in. That like, uh, the guy on the projection's always the last guy to get the words up. You know, those words should be ahead of time. He should know those songs, he should, or her, whoever's doing it. They should know the songs well enough. And that's, they should come to rehearsals. And when you're doing your rehearsals, you know, that they're going through the rehearsal, too, because it's really important. I mean, you know, because a lot of people, their first time at your church, they don't know what these songs are, you know, and they're trying to sing through them and feeling comfortable. And if they come from, like, he talked to a lot of different churches, you know, they're not used to these songs. I remember when we started our South Bend church that, uh, yeah, yeah, the, they come in there, and I thought these people just hated our church. It was nothing like that. They just didn't know none of our songs because they came from a traditional church. So that was the big difference there. So, you know, uh, knowing the words and for them is like a big thing when they come in. Then they were just, they, they've been with our church a long time. They just, I, was, I thought they didn't like our church or didn't even like my worship. They were just, I don't know these songs. And probably our projector person was probably a few words behind. So they're just trying to sing along. So, uh, so your level in your worship is really important in all these things, you know, all these little things that go behind the scenes every Sunday, you know, is just so important. You just like, we, you know, 
we just come to the service and we see everything going on and it's great, you know. But there's so many little things as you, as a leader, you should know if you're going to be leading worship because it's real important, you know. If you're a pastor, you should know these things. Like, uh, that shouldn't be like that, you know. You, you know, so you, you're, you're the director. <laughs> I don't care how much, you're not the worship leader. You're still the director of the service. So uh, make sure you know a lot of these things and, and be aware, aware of them, you know. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to talk about your lighting should be low during the worship time. And, uh, you know, yeah, lighting is very important in your services. Don't have the lights blaring during worship service. I guess you had 10,000 people and that was your, the way you wanted to do your worship service. You wanted all the lights on and everybody, I guess. But in our churches, we are not used to that through Church of the Heartland. We usually bring the lights down, you know, and the house lights, bring them down during worship because it. I've seen it. I'm the guy up here playing guitar and you've got a spotlight on everybody in the whole church and they just feel uncomfortable. They don't want to raise their hands. They don't want to clap their hands. They are just intimidated. Like, you know, you see the sill of the light down on you, you know. I guess that's probably what they feel like. They all just stand there with their arms down and they won't worship. But soon as I turn down the lights, they'll start raising their hands. They'll start praising God. They'll start worshiping. And it's real important. And, and uh, make sure the lights, too, are not too flashy. You know, if you do have a lot of light stuff, you know, make it easy. You know, if you're going to do light changes, make them easy. Not, you know, any rock show going on or anything, you know. Because the same thing, it's drawn away from the attention. You're, you got all these lights going, it's not lifting the Lord up. I mean, you can use these things to create, you know, uh, time for the Holy Spirit to move. He does use the lights and everything. I, I believe that God uses all this stuff. He created them, so... Let's use them by golly. So, so, uh, but, you know, you can get too carried away with anything. You know, you can just go too crazy with anything. So make sure all your lighting transitions. And, and if you have lights, use lighting transition, you know, like to set a mood for a slower song or a faster song. Try different colors. See how that works, you know. A lot of our churches, we have a blue mode or a red mode or, you know, we just have different ones for your lighting. So work on a lot of that stuff. And, and, you know, it's just trial and error what works for you, you know, like it's, but, it, but it's important. Lighting's, lighting is real important. I mean, you, you know, you look at the temple. There was, no, there, was, there was a lot of lights going on in this place, you know. What was the candles they had there, you know, which God had his own light show going, but that was cool. But, uh, but you know, there was, it was a dark place. This was not a well-lit place because God wants you to focus on him not of the things going around and, and I think that's what's so important in our worship services you know and and even in today's society I mean you go to the movie you know they don't leave the light up you know you know the movie's going to start when the lights go down so these, these are just real good things that and if somebody you know I think somebody that isn't saved and you go in and you turn the lights down there like, hey, it's about to start, you know. And I've had so many people say, well, why do you turn the lights down? Because I'm ready to get one on one with God. That's just what it does for me. I know like the, everything's going down. It's going to be a good time with the Lord. Uh, yeah, you know, when it comes to new people in your church, new, new, new people in your church, you know, they are coming into a strange area in their life. You know what I mean? And, and when somebody gets saved, you gotta, you gotta, they don't know nothing about raising their hands or shouting to the Lord, you know, and probably most of the stuff that they heard was absolutely nothing what he taught about in earlier. So they don't, know what to do so you know when i'm worship leading i try to you know i like uh raise your hands first you know if you're a singer or something you know and then you just say if you feel comfortable why don't you just raise your hands 
you know, and, and be okay if somebody doesn't raise their hands if they don't. You know, I've, I got a lot of people that every Sunday that I go and they don't move a muscle and they've been there for a long time. But it's okay. I don't know what's going on inside. I had a, I had a man one time that I didn't think this guy didn't love the Lord or something, or he did not like my worship. But his wife says, you know, he just ain't a real expressive guy, but he's, he's just over there with tears running down, you know, his face. He just, he, so, I mean, you don't know what's going on inside. But for, for new Christians, you've got to lead them, you know. They don't know. It ain't, they, ain't, they ain't dancing because they don't know they can dance. Uh, you know, hey, we're an expressive church. And, and in the beginning of your worship service, you know, try to ex- explain a couple things that's going to go on in your worship service. It's, it's real, for the new person, it's really important that you do that. Because I know, like, uh, but I was, I can't say that for me because I was the crazy guy, you know, like, woo, you know, because, you know, my church experience was in the bars, not in church. So, and when I went to my first church, it was pretty radical. So I was pretty right in there with it. It was it was okay for me, and I'm still kind of that way now. So, <laughs> so I'm still going that way. But uh, but like he said, you know, it's the expression of your heart too. You know, you know, love God when you're worshiping, love Him and express it. You know, you got to express it. But just make sure that whatever you're doing or what you're you're trying to explain something. If something goes a little crazy in your service, a little worship, a little Holy Spirit, you know, you as pastors or leaders, you know, in this service, you know, go up and explain, you know, this is part of the Holy Spirit, you know. I know that was a little weird there, but, you know, God does some different stuff, you know. So, and uh, just make sure you explain something if something goes on in your service that they don't would understand because it's it's really it's just all about information you know if 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 people knew uh uh, why you did things they would understand it a much better oh okay i i get that i understand that and i think we got to be as leaders to be able to communicate that to our congregation and okay let me see what else i got going on here i got a lot of stuff i got to get through here i'm trying to Trying to work on this here. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. Okay, let's talk about service order, okay? Uh, yeah, know what's going on in your worship service, you know, that morning or, or before, you know, pastors or leaders know what's going on. I always make sure that I'm connecting with the pastor at the church to, like, Okay, we got baptism going on today. Do you want the baptism song at the end of worship? Do you want it in the middle of worship? Or, or am I leaving because I do multiple campuses? And you'll do it at the end after I leave. So no things like that. Or what's going on, communion. What's going on in your services. Make sure your worship team knows what's going on in your services. Because it, it's, it's real important that they... They know what's going on, so nothing, you know, pastor gets up and let's, I don't know anything about this. What's going on? So make sure you're in good communication with your worship team every Sunday, like all of it. Like, what are we doing through the service? Am I coming back up at the end? Your tech team, you know, a lot of our churches, we just do music at the end of the worship service. So they know, like, okay, at the end of the service, you're going to bring some music up, bring the lights down. These parts of the service is real important. And uh, making sure you know all the slides and everything in the whole service. I'm going to do this, blah, 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 you know. I know Misty Hyatt is the best on this. She literally, it's wrote out from A to Z what, what you're doing. And give that to your tech person so they know, like, this slide, that slide's next. And it's real, I... That's, that's a big help. Instead of them like, well, what's going on next? You know, what scripture's next? Or what's going on? If, if you print these things out ahead of time, or your service is a big, big help. And it just makes everything go smoother. Uh, just, it's, it's a big deal. It makes a big difference. 
Um, let me see where I'm at here. Okay, well, I'm going to get back on the worship team a little bit here. Uh, it's important for rehearsals. I mean, it is so important about worship practice, you know. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, when you come to your worship, I call it worship rehearsal. Because practice needs to be at home. You're coming to go through the, the songs. If you're learning new songs, make sure you send your songs out ahead of time so people know what you're going to rehearse that practice and uh, so they have time to listen to them or go through them. That way when you get together, everybody's kind of got the song, kind of know what's going on because it does take time to work things out and uh, make sure you have everything in the right keys and everything like that. So everybody's, you know, make, make, make sure that it's a rehearsal not a practice because it makes a big difference and I even find this with myself that I lack in this because <laughs> I played guitar for a lot of years so I got to find myself practicing before the rehearsal so when we get together we ain't spending a bunch of time wasting time on not knowing the songs ahead of time and so make, make sure you're doing that make sure your teams are doing that or even if you're leading worship yourself, you know, don't, <laughs> don't get up there if you've got a worship song you're leading or just a video or something that you know that video, you know. Uh, you know, they like in your car, blah, 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 every other worship, every other word, you know. You've got to know the words. You've got to know things. So make sure that if you're leading worship in a service or make sure you know the song. It's, it's good to know that yeah, you can get into it. And it's, it's been another thing that we've been working on because of these nice things right here in our worship services is not looking at our iPads now. We have these new devices. And, uh, yeah, and my pastor's been on to me about not staring at the iPad. And, and so, amen. May, amen. He's saying amen back there. Because it's, yeah, you want to engage with your, when you're leading worship. You want them to feel like they're a part of your worship. Not that you're staring at your iPad. You want to engage them. You, and please, worship people, smile. Have, just, just have lots of joy in your life. You know, don't be scared. It's okay. The Lord is with you. And make sure you smile at the congregation. Make sure you're con eye contact with the and not just one guy you know look at this there's other people in the sanctuary over here and there's other people over here in the sanctuary and they just love it when you just get involved with them and so make make sure that you're doing that because we have all this electronic stuff and we get so into the electronic stuff instead of just flowing in the spirit and, and it's, it's really working for me to try to work out of this. That, uh, because before we used to just have music stands and, and words, and it was the same way. I mean, make sure that you know your stuff, you know. Back in my worldly days, I did 50 songs without any words, music. Yeah, 50 songs. And I knew every one of them without no music stand, without an iPad. So I think most of us do about 25 songs. We probably could know them pretty well by heart. And so that's where you need it. This should be the thing, because I do it. I went brain dead, and I can't remember my words. For some reason, I just, and I got a backup to help me get through that. Or even your back projection. You know, that's your, uh, that's your backup. Don't make that your main thing. Because it, it'll come off like that. It'll come off in your worship service. And you can't sing from your heart. You can't play from your heart. You can't worship from your heart. And that's what it's all about, you know, is connecting through what's going through you, what God's using you. And no matter what, if you're the pastor leading or whatever, make sure that you're connecting with your, with your congregation. Because just to look at something or look at your notes 
that isn't engaging and we're just blocking them out so make sure that you practice <laughs> practice it makes everything better and okay i'm going to move on to tryouts okay yes okay always have tryouts don't just let joe the guitar player come or whoever i don't think i have a joe uh d don't have joe come up uh practice came to practice he's a, he's a good guitar player and he plays sunday never ever never ever ever do that because you want to you want to know joe's heart i don't care if he's the best guitar player in the world and goes home and does crazy stuff like i gotta know that the guy i'm putting up here loves god and he's going to reflect god in his life so we got to just, I, and I tell you, I don't know how many times because a lot of the churches around here will just let anybody get up and sing or play. And, uh, and uh, I've had them come to my church and say, come and sing at a rehearsal and say, well, am I playing uh, Sunday? You know, no, no. I usually wait about, I usually wait about six weeks or so, maybe even eight weeks for a new person to go through all the songs so I can just fill them out personally. I don't put them up, and, and if, I, if I don't feel right right away, it could be longer, you know, and I even tell them that, you know, you know, and, and usually people that wanna just wanna be the superstar or this thing, they will never come back to practice again, probably won't, sad, probably won't even come back to church because I didn't let them get up and sing next Sunday. And so, it, you know, tryouts, you know, it just, just, I always have them just come to worship, practice, you know, and, and that way they're reacting, too, with the rest of the game, too, and, and just to see how everybody feels about the person, too. And I, I think it's, that's, that's, that's how I do it. It really is. That's, that's how I do it. And I think it's, it's real important to just see where they're, they're at spiritually walk. And uh, I think that wait, making them wait that six weeks or eight weeks well, definitely, you'll see how they're hard. Are they doing it for glory? Are they doing it for Jesus? And I, or to be seen, you know. I, I, I don't get up every Sunday to be seen. <laughs> you know, I get up because I love God, and I want to worship God, and I want to lead people into the presence of God. It, 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 I don't, you know, like, if I was the guy on the front pew or the guy playing guitar, it wouldn't matter one bit to me and that's where my heart is and I think as a that's the worship person you're looking for there you know and and I'll go on to the next part of this is just because you got super rock star guy doesn't mean he's the right guy to lead your worship or be on your worship team just because he can play every note and scale and he's the best singer and got the coolest hair I used to have cool hair, but it's kind of going. Uh, I am trying to grow it back out again, though. But anyways, uh, so, but, you know, that's, you've got to know their heart, you know, and, and filter that out because just because a guy's real good, and this is the other part, just because you need that guy so bad, you want to put him on the team because you need that guy. Don't do that. Don't, do not do that. I, please do not do that. Uh, I remember, I mean, he's going to, uh, uh, up to the sea, and uh, I think it was Desperation Band was there, and him and his brother was there. And uh, one of the guys says, well, should I put a guy on the team? Be you know, he's a real good guy, but he ain't a Christian. And he says, well, I don't put nobody on the team for a year. And they got to sit in the front row and worship God for a year. And I watch them for a year before they even get the tryout for the team. And then he says, you know, he goes, we just did worship here with me and this acoustic guitar. And, you know, the anointing was here. You know, we felt the power of God. And he says, it ain't about the number of people you have in your worship team. 
that's the anointing that's on your worship team. That's what it's about. And that just hit me because I was real big, like, I get to, this guy's great, man. And then, and, but it, it saves a lot of pain for that person and you down the road because you said, because do you want to weed them out? Because they will. They'll weed their self out. If they're doing it for the glory, they'll weed their self out. So make sure that just because somebody's good doesn't mean they should be on the worship team. Wow. Gosh. We better move along. Yeah. Uh, so that's some really good things, you know, that I'm trying to put in your hearts there. That, you know, these are good practical things. If you're starting your first church, you know, like these are good things to have in your spirit, you know, to know that when these guys come up, you know, hey, video worship's great. You know, you don't, you don't have to deal with those guys at all. Like, there's no, they're going to come up there and play every Sunday, that video worship. <laughs> and, <laughs> and once you get a worship team, it's going to be a little different than uh, the video worship. So these are just some things I just want you aware of that you're going to probably go through and deal with, which I've dealt with over 20 years of that kind of stuff. But when you got a team that's together and they love God, the anointing will fall. Oh, my gosh. And then, like, uh, it's, there's nothing like that. When you got a team that loves God and they're coming there because they love God, that's, that's so important, you know. Okay, I'm going to move on to some technical stuff, you know, like, uh, you know, your worship team, you know, a lot of you probably watching online, you know, you got worship teams. I've been showing, tell you some stuff I've been moving on, you know, like, you know, from old days to new days, you know, as worship leaders, we got to continue to be moving on what's going on, be aware of new equipment and stuff like that. And I think this really can apply to a new uh, pastor or a new church. I've been working on uh, some different types of equipment that would really help you out as a, as a new pastor or a new church. You know, I've been going to a lot of uh, digital stuff. I've been going to, uh, I've been doing a lot of Behringer X-Air 18, XR, X18, which is a digital mixer. And I've been doing a lot of in-ear monitor stuff now, uh, which we haven't done in the past and we're moving to. And this is really good stuff because you don't have to buy the extra monitor systems or anything like that. You just, like headphones, you put it in your ears. It's really, it just really help out in your worship team. If you don't have this stuff, you really need to research it, really be working on it because it will help your sound a lot. You don't have any monitor, like the guitar player is too loud, the vocals are too loud, and then it, you eliminate your monitor mix in your house mix. You just turn into this awesome stereo, you know, like, yeah, seriously, because you don't have all the extra noise, so your sound guy can actually be a sound guy. He can mix. So this is some stuff. i also been uh, into uh, multitrack.com. It's a good thing to look into. It's a backtracking uh, software company, and you can put it on your iPad as a, uh, let's say you got a singer, okay? You got a singer, and you don't have a band. But you could use multitrack.com. It's going to play the backtrack. It's going to tell you at, in your ear monitors, because you need in-ear monitors with this system, and it's going to tell you where you are in the song. So you can sing along with the song, and you got the full band there. You know, if you got four or five singers, this is great for a church. You know, let's say you got two or three singers, but you ain't got no musicians. This would be a great tool for you to look up, be a part of, and just like tell them Larry sent you or something. I don't know, maybe I can get ten percent. Anyways, but it's a really good tool, and it's something that I'm working on in my campuses. That hopefully over the next year I can work this in. And besides, even if you're a small team and the bass player didn't show up today, you can pull up the bass part in this software. You, you know, you still got your full band, you know, and they're saying, wow, where'd all those keyboard parts come from? Uh, and I see you out there, you're going, oh, that's cheating. Uh, everybody does it. There is not one person you see on TV, one person you go live to watch that is not doing backtracking. 
It, nobody. Nobody. Everybody does it. And that's why you go, oh, they're so awesome. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Where's, where's that guitar part coming from? <laughs> oh, I better play now. Dun. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that's what, so, but it's, it's really good stuff. Uh, check into that. You know, I, I recommend it. You know, if you're starting a church, this is some stuff that can get you going easily. You know, and if you've got any questions, you know, just contact me and I can just help you through it. So it's just, it's just good stuff. You know, like uh, God's, God's moving in everything in your worship. And be aware of these stuff. Always be looking up new stuff. You know, don't be stuck like the way you, the stuff you've got. You know, the, the turnovers every five years, basically. I mean, there's new equipment. About every five years, you need to like throw out the old and start thinking about the new because it changes. And I bet you it's probably about every two to three years now. I mean, that's kind of old school, actually, about five years. It used to be about ten, but now it's, it's just quickly stuff is just being developed. And, and it's all stuff to just make it easier for you. Um, just uh, let me see what I got here. To Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, okay, last thing. Uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're doing your, your worship, uh, when you're changing your music, do this slowly. Do not have all new songs next week, and then the week next week, we got all new songs again. We, and then next week, we got new songs again. About 10%, you know, over a year of changing songs. So make sure that you do this, because you would lose your congregation, because... They will never learn your songs. And if they can't learn your songs, then they can't sing your songs. So just because I played this song, Larry Redland, uh, three rehearsals a week and three services a week, uh, doesn't mean that Susie sang that song six times that week. (laughs) So just make sure that you don't lose your church because I've done this. I've learned a lot of songs. I'm thinking, well, they ain't singing a lot of my songs because they don't know my songs because I ain't played them enough. Because I play them once. I, I do a rotation of, uh, I got 25 songs, and I do a rotation of every four weeks. And I just, when I add a new song, I take one off and put it in the rotation. That's all I do. And, and even for your worship players, they get to know the songs better. And your congregation gets to know you're not losing them. So I think that's my last thought of the night, because I probably went over. And I could go probably a long time. But, uh, but uh, thanks, and uh, you just have an awesome night.